Hi, I'm Will Dangler, and this is the first episode in the series, The Art of Math Proof. In this series, we're going to be talking about what is a math proof, what isn't a math proof, and how you can go about proving things on your own. As such, this series is intended for students who are currently in, or are about to be in, their first math course involving mathematical proof. That being said, anyone with a strong understanding of basic algebra should be able to follow along without too much trouble. Now in this first episode, we're briefly going to touch on what is a math proof at a very high level. And then we're going to jump into the integers and the even integers in particular. So let's get started. Well, what is a math proof? A math proof, in a very abstract sense, is simply a formal, logical argument that shows a mathematical statement is true. Okay, well, that's nice and succinct. This definition doesn't really help us too much in truly understanding what a math proof is. After all, I can't take this definition and just go and write a math proof now. I can't even take this definition and identify what a math proof is using it. Unfortunately, there's not a simple definition I can give you that would allow you to just go and start proving things. Instead, learning what a math proof is involves going through many, many examples, trying, trying many of those yourself, and slowly building the intuition necessary to identify and execute math proofs on your own. So, looking back at our abstract definition, a math proof is a formal logical argument used to show that a mathematical statement is true. So, it's talking about mathematical statements and showing that they're true. So, what is a mathematical statement? You've seen mathematical statements throughout your entire mathematical education. An example of one is if you add two even integers together, you will get a third even integer. Or, more simply put, the sum of two even integers is itself an even integer. Another mathematical statement in a similar nature is the sum of an even and an odd integer is an odd integer. So those are some examples of mathematical statements, and a math proof is the tool used to show that those statements are always true. And the way a math proof is done is it's a formal, logical argument. So let's dig into the first of these two statements. The sum of two even integers is itself an even integer. I'm going to write this down. The sum of two even integers is itself an even integer. So, this is a mathematical statement. What is it telling us? It's saying if we have two even integers and we add them together, we're talking about their sum, that when we do so, we're going to get another even integer. So it's kind of like a formula. It's saying, hey, if these properties are true, then this property true is true. So if, you know, the property, if we have integers and they have the property of evenness, when we add those together, then the sum will have the resulting property of also being even. And a math proof is how we explain why this statement is true. So if we want to show that this statement is true, if we want to explain without doubt that the sum of two even integers is itself an even integer, we're going to need to really understand what exactly the things we are talking about are. Uh, in a very explicit manner. So we're talking about adding integers because we're talking about the sum of integers and not just adding integers, but we're talking about even integers 
in particular. So if we want to prove something about the statement, we need to know, well, what are the integers? That would, that would be good. We also need to know how we add them, what, what happens when we, when we do so. Uh, and finally, we also need to know what it means to be an even integer. Now, I've chosen this statement because the integers, and in particular, even integers, is something we're all very familiar with. We all know what the integers are, we know how to add them, and we know what an even integer is. So, let's just be a little more explicit. What are the integers? Well, the integers are a bunch of numbers. There's an infinite number of integers. And some of the integers include the counting numbers. One, two, three, four, and so forth, and so on. The integers also include zero, as well as the additive inverse, or negative one times the counting number. So negative one, negative two, negative three, and so forth. And those are the integers. So we all know what the integers are. We, we know a couple things about the integers too. For instance, we know how to add together two integers. Um, and we know when we do, we'll get another integer. Like we can take two plus eight and we'll get 10, or we can do four plus seven and get 11. Very easy. We also know that we can multiply two integers together and again, get another integer. We can take seven times eight and get 56, or we can take negative 11 times two and get negative 22. Simple. We know how to do these things and we're gonna take advantage of that. So those are the integers. And we know a little bit about them. We know how to add them. We know when we do, we're gonna get another integer. So what's it mean to have an even integer then? Well, an integer is even. There's a couple different ways we could go about stating that an integer is even. We all know you know, what means to be even. Um, so let's just choose a, a definition that I think we can all agree on. Uh, an integer is even if it's a multiple of two. Very simple, okay. So an integer is even if it's a multiple of two. Nothing crazy here. If we think about some even integers, such as Four. Four is a multiple of two. Obviously, it's two times two. Six is an even integer because it's a multiple of two because it is two times three. It is a multiple of two. So, now we have our first definition of what it means to be an even integer. You're an even integer if you're a multiple of two. So let's be a little more explicit. We, we know what it means to be a multiple of two, but let's be as explicit as possible. What exactly does it mean to be a multiple of two? Well, if you're a multiple of two, if I can multiply two by another integer to, to get to get you. Okay, so let's state that explicitly. An integer is a multiple of two, or just to cut to the chase, it's even. two by that other integer, we're going to get the first integer. So it gets really confusing and, and hard to talk about, you know, multiplying these numbers together when I'm referring to them as the first integer, the other integer, it's too wordy, it's too confusing. So when we define things a lot in mathematics, we use variables, we just use placeholders. So instead of saying, 
an integer, I'm just going to give it a name. So then I don't have to keep referring to it as that integer. Um, I'm going to give it the name a. I'm use my orange chalk. So an integer a is even. If there exists another integer, I'm going to give this the name b, such that 2 times b is equal to a. A is equal to 2 times B. Okay, so great. We said that an integer is even if it's a multiple of 2, and then we were like, well, what exactly is a multiple of 2? Multiple of 2 means that, you know, I can multiply some number by 2 to get that other number. So we formalized that a bit more. We said an integer A, gave it the name A. We could have gone with any name. We could have said an integer X integer y and integer alpha, it didn't matter. We chose a is even. If there exists another integer b, and again, we could have gone with any variable name. We could have gone with x, y, beta, it does not matter, but we chose b. So an integer a is even. If there exists another integer b, such that a is equal to 2 times b. Wow, so this is a very wordy and intense way of just saying something's even. But it's actually a quite useful definition. So oh, let's just make sure this makes sense. So we kind of have a formula here. We're saying, hey, if I've got an integer on this side, you know, then I need to find the, the integer b. So if we want to ask the question, is 6 even? So 6 is even. If there's another integer b, such that when we multiply 2 by b, we're going to get 6. So we know how to solve this. We can just divide each side by 2, or multiply by 1 half. Which is then going to give us that 3 is equal to b. And so there is another integer that we can multiply by 2 to get 6. The integer is b. Uh, the integer is 3. And so when we're talking about using this definition, we said, hey, if I can write the integer a such that, you know, there's another integer I can multiply by 2 to get this integer, it's even. And we found that integer. We found that b is equal to 3, or more simply, that 6 is equal to 2 times 3. Great. So let's look at some other examples. You know, just one example isn't enough to, to show that it's always true. So let's just look at another one. Make sure, make sure that this still makes sense. Uh, we'll do negative 12. Okay, so negative 12. Well, negative 12 is equal to 2 times negative 6. And so, in this case, our b would be negative 6. Negative 6 is an integer, and we can multiply it by 2 to get negative 12. So therefore, negative 12 is also even. Okay, well, it seems to be working out. Well, let's try an odd number. What happens if we have an odd number? So, 5. Well, 5 is equal to 2 times 5 halves. So in this case, our b is 5 halves. So this looks very similar to what we need. We have 2 times some number. But in our definition of evenness, we didn't just say any number. We explicitly said there exists another integer. And 5 halves is not an integer. In fact, there is no integer we can multiply by 2 in order to get 5. And because of that, it does not match the definition. So 5 is not even. Let's do one more. We'll do 7. Well, 7 is just equal to 2 times 7 halves. And in this case, 
then our theta is equal to 7 halves. And once again, 7 halves is not an integer, and therefore 7 is not even. So this has been the first episode of The Art of Math Proof. In the next episode, we're actually going to prove our mathematical statement that the sum of two even integers is in fact even. Until next time, this has been Will Dickler.